Hi everyone, my name is Kaylin Annabelle and in this video I will be teaching all of you how to make tape or also known as sticky rice. So tape is basically a very very uh, well-known cake here in Indonesia. Well, I think it's a type of cake. It's not really clear what kind of food it is. But we do know it's edible and it is delicious. So today I'm going to be showing you guys the process of making it and maybe a little bit of the reactions that happen during the making, such as the fermentation process. I will be explaining about it a little bit. So without further ado, let's get on with the video and hope you guys enjoy it. So the first step is to rinse the sticky rice until it is clean. And while waiting, we can start to boil some water. Once the water is done boiling, pour it into the bowl containing the sticky rice and then let it soak for approximately 10 to 12 hours. After 12 hours, drain the water. However, some of the water will still remain inside the sticky rice. With the remaining water, we can get rid of them by cooking it and boiling it in the pan earlier until eventually the water runs out because of evaporation. So we are only left with the sticky rice itself. The next step is to steam the sticky rice using the steamer. As I said before, the deeper the steamer, it will be better since it will reduce the time for the sticky rice to be fully cooked. So basically, we just need to scoop it little by little into the steamer itself and then we wait until it is fully cooked. rice is done cooking, take it out of the steamer little by little, just like last time. Now, place it onto the bamboo tray. This can be any kind of tray. I used the bamboo one since it's the only one I have. Then, spread the sticky rice all over the tray to make it cool. It is strictly important that the sticky rice is cool when we spread the yeast over it. If it's too hot, the yeast will automatically die and our sticky rice cake will not be formed or tape in other words will not be formed so to make this process even faster i would recommend using an electric fan placed right in front of it so the cooling down process can happen even quicker once the sticky rice is already cool enough to spread the yeast prepare them and let us start spreading so for this, I'm going to be using a grater because the yeast that I'm using is in the form of a sphere or some sort of block. It is easier for me to spread it using a grater. So the grater is by far probably the most effective tool and the easiest one to use. So basically just grate it and make sure to go around the entire tray so that the yeast is equally spread throughout all the sticky rice. And for all the younger kids out there who are trying this, please have an adult supervision nearby because I do not want you to get hurt in any sort of way. And watch your fingers because yeast are very easy to grate and sometimes you kind of forgot that you are grating. Basically, the yeast is important to be equally spread because if it's not equally spread, the fermentation process will not be equal throughout the entire sticky rice and we do not want that and if you are done with the grating process this is what the sticky rice will look like 
it will basically look like some sort of snow has fallen on your sticky rice. If the yeast is already equally spread, now it's time to scoop it, little by little, just like before, into a tightly closed jar. And we are going to keep it there for about 3 days. If all of the sticky rice is already placed inside the container or jar, I would recommend using a rolling pin to press it down a little bit to give it some shape or just to make it tidy. And of course, before closing it, I would recommend that you clean up the size of the jar so that when we are done with this cooking process, we will be able to clean the jar easily. And lastly, to keep things even more compact and closed, I will add a little bit of banana leaf which is already cut in the shape of the container on top of the sticky rice. Finally, it is time to close the container. Now wait for 3 days and let us see the progress. So after about 3 days of waiting, here is the results of our sticky rice or tape. So basically, as you guys can see, it's quite wet and soggy. This is only the fourth day, and now let's take a taste test, shall we? Look at that beautiful red color. Mmm, it's quite delicious, and it's sweet. So you guys, after seeing the results of only four days, the taste of our sticky rice cake is very, very sweet. And even if during these three days of waiting, you open up a little bit of the top of the container, you can smell like a little bit of the alcoholic aroma, which is something that I really enjoy. You see, the alcoholic aroma shows that the yeast is working its magic. So the fermentation process happens when the yeast eventually starts to eat a little bit of the starch and the sugar contained in our sticky rice mixture. Even so, then it will secrete some water and that's why during the video, if you guys can see, after each day, the water in the container becomes a lot more. It is totally noticeable. And people say that for the sticky rice making process, you're supposed to wait for about a week. But I don't know, it's probably because of different variations of uncooked sticky rice grain that you guys can actually purchase in the market or even the type of yeast that you use but for mine i only waited for about three days and the results are very very satisfying i was actually able to eat that it was delicious and it was sweet anyways i want to thank you all so much for watching this video hopefully the process and everything that I've mentioned in this video can help you guys or maybe you guys learn a little something but thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed today's video see you in the next video